One of the one of the big questions that developers always ask is, well, how much can I save? Now, cost savings are there um, for the right product, for the right project. It's got to be designed right, right from the start. But right here, right now, modular is dialed in to be successful. You know, we just got to use it. I'm Darren Seary, I'm principal of Optimum Modular Solutions. We're a solding company specializing in modular construction. Located in Orange County, we'll cover in Southern California, Northern California. We can work pretty much anywhere. Consulting, project management, construction management, full turnkey. So I can combine a design experience with a boots on the ground construction experience. From the consulting side, we're looking at helping clients understand what the best use of modular construction is, how they can use it, where it might work, where it might not work. We work with architects from a very early stage. We'll help them design to optimize for modular, for manufacturing and assembly, the DMFA, to create an efficient delivery team, price the project correctly, and take what has been somewhat of a fragmented process and pull it all together, making sure that there's no overlaps in the scope making sure that there's no gaps in the scope. I mean, that is one of the challenges in modular construction is that it, it maybe it's just been oversold as being a very simple process by, say, manufacturers or whatever. The It is, in theory, it's a simple system. There's a lot of different nuances and complexities that, unfortunately, have, because of that mentality, there's been some challenges and mistakes made along the way. A quick overview of what is modular construction. There is a lot of different terms used in the industry for what is modular. Uh, we're ultimately trying to get to the point where more and more is built off-site and prefabricated balconies or you know framing systems. You know, then you step it up to panelized, but you, then you've still got obviously a certain amount of work to do on site. And then volumetric, volumetric modular, which is where a box essentially is built off site and everything's inside it is craned into position and set in place. So that's kind of volumetric modular. You can have wood, um, steel, um, shipping containers is another example for that. The greatest opportunity to have as much built off site as possible. Prefabrication is is been common for many many years and decades. You know, panelized is literally panels are built off site, um, and they include certain finishes sometimes, and windows and doors, and some of the MEP, and they're assembled on site. In terms of trying to minimize the amount of on site work, what else could become modular? And anybody knows construction is the elevators that tend to take the longest to get completed and then signed off and inspected. So in the meantime, there is typically hoists, material hoists um, that are used. You can bring in and drop those elevators in on a crane, either on the side of the building or drop it into a, an enclosed area. It comes with a shaft and with all of the um, dens glass and things with it. But, you know, that drops in. But the advantage of the modular elevators is that you can get them online much quicker. You don't need to use those hoists. Well, parking is an interesting one because what we're seeing now is the use of stacker systems. Anything that's uniform, anything that can be repeatable, affordable housing, uh, shelters, et cetera, they really work well for the volumetric side of things. You know, if a client comes and says, we want to build, uh, you know, a 300 unit, 55 different unit types, all different sizes. And we want vaulted ceilings, octagonal units and stuff like that. Well, that's more for panelized. Volumetric modular is not gonna work. Just put some real high level benefits. I mean, schedule is the big one. Um, all hands down every single time, if it's designed right, constructed right, well coordinated, it will save, there will be significant cost saving in terms of schedule savings. So schedule savings relate to accelerated revenue generation, 300 units, and let's say $2,000 um, a month for each of those units, and you can finish 10 to 12 months earlier. Now, cost savings are there um, for the right product, for the right project. It's got to be designed right, right from the start. When you're building a module, you're building in a factory and you're building under a roof. You know, the, the, the trades that are doing, say, for instance, the drywall, the flooring, the kitchens, 
you've got repeatability. It's the same crews that you're going to be working on those in the factory on a production line, so to speak. So you get that same quality all the way throughout. You don't have different people moving from different projects and, you know, the trade, the trade people on, on, on a site, on a conventional site may get pulled to a different project and you've got a different crew coming in and, you know, time quality and cost is conventional construction Quality is, is normally there, but you have to sacrifice timing and sometimes costs. So typically you have you can get two or two out of that three. You, know, you do get better sound um, mitigation between units because you essentially you've got two walls that you're putting together. A lot of urban infill projects that are going to be happening. This construction noise is, is obviously a tremendous benefit that the modules just come in and there's a very quick um setting process and um, noise is greatly mitigated safer work environment of course in a factory um it's more of a control condition situation and less construction waste um modules are built with with lengths lengths of of wood or steel cut to lengths and and that's where the software comes in you can order it to lengths and then there's far less construction waste. There's like still some things that no matter how good on-site construction becomes, modular will still be superior. The schedule aspect, you you, it's, it's going to be extremely challenging to get it as fast. And the reason for that, a typical five over one podium, while they're while they're starting to do all of the grading and sometimes subterranean um, levels and shoring, etc., or building that podium. At that time, they can start building the modules off-site. When the podium is ready and cured and ready for loading, that you have a completed building in a matter of weeks from that point. So that overlap in construction will always yeah. be conventional construction. Currently, you know, modular is not a widely adopted construction method. So, you know, when you're going down this path, what are some of the obstacles or challenges that you've seen? What can a developer kind of expect to uh, run into as they go down this path? The benefits, yeah, we can talk about all the other benefits in terms of less construction waste and everything else, but everything is about the bottom line and the, the fact that there are many subcontractors out there that are unfamiliar with modular construction. They they you know, unfortunately overprice it, overprice their scopes and the general contractor collects these scopes. And if they're experienced or not experienced, well, they may or may not be able to challenge those numbers. And ultimately those numbers get added to the numbers from the modular manufacturer and they're over. When you put the two together, it doesn't pencil sometimes. It comes out sometimes more than if they were to do it traditional construction. And then all of a sudden it goes to back to conventional construction. So it won't be like that forever. It's just that, you know, the modular industry is only 4% of the construction industry right now. But as more and more contractors get involved in, in projects, and I think it starts with the architect. I mean, the architect has to design it to be modular friendly in the first place. Until you've actually worked in the modular world and you've worked with the manufacturers, it, it's a difficult thing to get right. So that's, that's I think, one of the biggest initial hurdles but an easy easy fix then one that really trips up a lot of projects is it goes further down the road and ultimately there's a realization that we might not be able to get this funded from a construction financing perspective because you know modular construction is 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 essentially um, off-site stored materials lenders will have certain thresholds on how they deal with that um, because there's obviously a risk that they are funding for something that there's not that's not on the site and is not part of building their collateral on the site. So there's that risk. There's ways around that. And there's a lot of lenders that are educating themselves on that. But there's a tremendous interest from lenders to, to work on modular construction projects because they do like to get it finished quickly and get out. It's not what you might think of traditional lenders wanting to keep a project going as long as long as possible you look at different payment terms different structures international manufacturers which obviously create that little bit more of a, um, a, a risk for a lender but there's ways around that too but ultimately it's going to come down to developers needing to put in some big deposits 
and forwarding, you know, front in that some of those costs. How big is that payment usually as percentage of the uh, unit manufacturing costs? There's design fees that there's kind of the first contract that occurs. It's ultimately, the modular manufacturer is the one that submits to the state. Deposits, each, each manufacturer has different payment terms. Obviously, the, the most manufacturers it's, is that if you're setting aside your production line, for a period of time starting on a certain date you need to have a deposit that if the, the developer says hey you know put it on hold for a couple of months or we're going to change this design that the cost associated with that is huge for a modular manufacturer so there needs to be a deposit that would compensate them for that aspect and then the purchasing of materials all of this is happening before sometimes even a shovel is in the ground on the job site Conventional construction with every nail or screw, whatever that goes on on that site, their collateral is building. It's challenging to do that off-site, though there are other mechanisms to to help secure collateral for off-site stored materials, which is a process I kind of help guide through. You know, supply bonds that can be put in place and letters of credit to be put in place. What does happen if you put a deposit in for manufacturing something a year from now and then you get around to building it and the manufacturer is no longer in business? The big payments that come down the road before they start manufacturing can sometimes be put into an escrow account. You know, I like to get an early engagement on the projects that we work and I want to try and get early engagement with the preferred lenders and start talking about the modular so that we don't get to the 11th hour and find that there's the lenders, you know, doesn't, didn't know that, didn't know about this, didn't know about that. Try to lay everything out, understand the full process, how the financing will work and work out some um, solutions so that we can all rest easy that the project, you know, the loan will close we would go to the modular manufacturers we want to see the finances we need to look through those um you know the, uh, it's not only that it's what's in the production line before our project and then what's more importantly what's behind it yeah there's no other projects following on behind you know a lender will look at that and think mm. if you're a smaller developer you need a stronger manufacturer you know one that's you know been in business a long time that's got a proven track record that's got strong finance there might be some manufacturers that help from a financing perspective and you might be able to negotiate some better terms with them pair you with a, a strong manufacturer and a strong gc too because that they go in hand in hand in many ways if you're a big name developer and you've got you know high net worth and you want to offer big corporate guarantees personal guarantees or whatever then maybe it's not as as critical you might you might open yourself up to more manufacturers the last risk uh in mitigating the last risk the fragmented industry <laughs> mm -hmm. how, do, how do we solve how do we solve that education is going to help deal with that bringing the everyone together in those in those events there's manufacturers there there's contractors there's architects they're all talking to each other and trying to deal with that kind of fragmented approach one of the one of the big questions that developers always ask is well how much can i save we could always say well it's 10 to 20 percent but you know before they really commit to anything they want to see something um for that and really the 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 true answer is well it depends the design the pricing the team and everything else that you that we've talked about we formed a, a team to generate two case studies and we've designed two different buildings. With these case studies, we're going to show floor plans, elevations, renderings, call them like prototypes, if you like. And then we are pricing them with this general contractor who's familiar with pricing. And we're going to be um, pricing not only a conventional project, but the modular too. This is a public document. You know, modular manufacturers can print it, give it out to people, whatever. It is it's intended to help the industry answer that question in, in a real world kind of situation. But right here, right now, modular is dialed in to be successful. You know, we just got to use it. Excellent. Good to see how you are piecing this whole thing together. Well, Darren, thank you so much. Thank you for your time and everything you're doing for the industry.